Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service for March 7th. Today is the third Sunday of Lent, the season leading up to Easter, where we reflect on some of the darker sides of faith, dealing with some of the hard things in our lives and also choosing to follow Jesus uh, on the way to the cross. As you may be coming from a good week or a bad week, uh, it's an interesting time of year because we are reflecting on these hard things while also seeing the days get longer and the flowers bloom and the trees get more leaves on them as spring is happening. And so these two things are going on together. And I think it's a good picture of what our lives are like all the time. We are constantly going through good days and bad days, good weeks and bad weeks. And the encouragement that we have is that no matter what's happening, God is present with us in the valleys and on the mountaintops. And so wherever you're coming from this week, we pause and we acknowledge that God is with us right where we are through all of it. So let's take a deep breath in and remember God's presence together. Breathe in slowly and deeply. God is with you and breathe out. And with gratitude, breathe in. Jesus, we're thankful for your presence and breathe out. The songs we're going to sing today are meant to help us remember that whatever we're going through, whether it's positive and full of the new life of spring or negative, like the things that we remember during the season of Lent, God is always with us and he is our source of peace. So I invite you to sing along with these songs and remind yourself of the truth about God's presence with you and also proclaim to him your praise and love of God. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise 
praise the Son and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. 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 This morning, we're going to do things in a little different order. So let's pray our repentance prayer right now and acknowledge that there are things in our lives that need to change, 
that aren't consistent with who, with who God wants us to be. So before we pray this prayer, I'd like to just give you a moment to consider if there's anything in your life that you're aware of that isn't in line with what God, with what God wants for you. Maybe invite God to help you find those things that you need to repent of. Will you read the words of this repentance prayer with me? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. You are forgiven. We are loved by God and welcomed as part of his family. Before we continue on our, in, in our service, I wanted to announce and remind everyone that we are having an in-person service next week, March 14th, outdoors at the church at 1030 a.m. on Sunday. Please bring a mask, be socially distant, and all of those things. And if you would like to join us online, you can continue to join us right here on our YouTube channel as we'll be live streaming the service as well. We are continuing uh, during the season of Lent to remember the way of the cross, that Jesus laid down his life. And in this section of uh, the season, we're focusing on three of the practices that Christians have emphasized historically during Lent, which are fasting, giving, generosity, and prayer. This week, we're talking about generosity. And if you've had a chance to watch the message, this week's message is based on 1 Timothy 6, where the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, who's a pastor, to teach the people in his church about being generous. And every week, I upload the sermon during the week, and then I, I try to think about what can we reflect on to help us practice these ideas, to remember or imagine or encounter the Bible in a way that's more than just you hearing me teach about something. I want to make it more experiential. I want to do more than just have an information dump from me to you. The point of reflecting is that we have an experience that shapes us, not just information. But the experience that best shapes us around the theme of generosity is being generous, just giving. So the main thing I want to do this morning is challenge you to be generous in some way that is difficult for you. If you've had a chance to watch the sermon already, then you know that's how I ended things, to, to reflect and ask God to help you find a way to give that is costly to you. And that's still the main thing I want to, to give you today is the challenge to find a way to be generous that is hard and that shapes you. But the second thing I, I want to do this morning is give us more time to reflect on this passage from 1 Timothy 6. Now, this week's sermon is about this, and we pray this passage every week as our generosity prayer. So what we're going to do now is use Lectio Divina, this historical practice of encountering the scripture and listening to it, to allow God to speak to us about how we might be even more generous whether it's to our church or to another organization or to an individual person who we know who has a need, we want God to shape us into people who are generous and content with what we have. So we're going to listen to these words that Paul wrote to Timothy 2,000 years ago and allow them to speak to us about becoming people of generosity. Let's pray and ask the Spirit to speak. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would guide us as we hear these words that we would not just hear Paul's words to Timothy, but that we would also hear your words for us, how we uh, can respond to this calling of generosity and why it is good for us. Help us to find our hope in you and not in the uncertainty of wealth. Uh, speak to us this morning. Amen. As I read the passage, a first time, just listen for a single word or phrase that stands out to you. I'll be reading from 1 Timothy 6, verses 6 through 19. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation, 
and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. If you'd like to share the word or phrase that stood out to you, you can share it with people who are in the room with you, or you can post it in the comments on YouTube. As I read the passage a second time, the question to reflect on is where does the content of this reading touch your life today? What is God speaking to you about specifically today. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the sight of God who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life.
If you'd like to share your reflections with the people who you're with, I invite you to do that, or you can share them in the comments on YouTube. On the final reading, we are going to be listening for our response. What is it that you believe God is leading you to do today or this week? Maybe you are feeling like God is leading you to a specific way to be generous with your money or with your time or your attention, uh, your skills. Ask God how he wants you to respond to this passage. This uh, instruction that Paul gave to Timothy, how is God instructing you? What does God want you to do in response? But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time, God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. If you'd like to share your action step, your response with the people who you're with, I invite you to do that, or you can share it online with us on YouTube. One of the things we do every week is we pray this passage as the generosity prayer. And one of the things I like about this prayer is that it's simply taking the Bible and turning it into words that we're directing to God. And that's something we can do with many passages throughout the Bible. And I hope that this is a good example for all of us about how to pray the scripture, how to turn these words that God has written for us into words that we can speak back to God. So let's pray this prayer that if you're part of our church, if you've been part of our church for the past year, these words have become familiar to us. And let's pray this prayer as a way of asking God to take these things we've read and make them a part of who we are. Let's read together. Godliness with contentment is great gain. 
We bring nothing into this world and we take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which plunges the human heart into ruin and pierces it with many griefs. We are determined to practice generosity with free hearts, fixing our hope on God and not the uncertainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds and willing to share all that we have, laying up for ourselves treasure that will not decay, but will shine in the age to come. Amen. As I say every week, if you'd like to give to our church, you can go on shilohnc.com slash give and give there. And if you have a financial need, please let us know by emailing us as we set aside a portion of everything that's given to help people in need. And I want to encourage you to give to our church and to give to other organizations and uh, opportunities that there are that you are aware of and to give to individuals in need that you hear of uh, to be increasingly generous. In 2 Corinthians 8, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth and he's inviting them to give to this cause. The church in Jerusalem was really poor, and then they had a famine. And so Paul's passion project, as he's going and writing most of the New Testament, and he's traveling around the Mediterranean world, his passion project was raising money for the church in Jerusalem. And Bible scholars talk about how before this, there wasn't really the concept of helping people who are dealing with disasters in another part of the world. Paul's really starting this. They didn't have a way to wire money. He had to actually carry very heavy amounts of gold and risk being robbed. But he felt like God was leading him to do this, to help uh, the people in Jerusalem by asking the people around the Mediterranean to give money to this. So in most of his books, Paul asks the people to donate money. And in 2 Corinthians 8, Paul tells the people in Corinth, look, you were really generous when I started this project a year ago, but now I'm telling you that the people up in Macedonia have given even more money than you have. And so he kind of gives them some positive peer pressure. Look, you gave a lot of money before, but your neighbors up in Macedonia have given even more money than that. So I'm asking you to give even more. So Paul is challenging the people to be even more generous. And then he, he talks about the giving of Jesus. And this is his main motivation he gives them. In 2 Corinthians 8, 8, Paul says, I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others, those people up in Macedonia. For you know the grace, the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. So Paul ties the generosity of the church to the generosity of Jesus. The word grace, which is throughout the New Testament, also means gift. It's the same word in Greek. Giving in and of itself is meant to be a way to grow in our relationship with Jesus because it makes our lives more like Jesus's life. Jesus, at the core of who he is and what he did, Jesus is a giver and Jesus gave. So the best way to experience what we're talking about today is not just to reflect on generosity or to think about generosity, but to be generous. When we are generous, we participate in the lifestyle of Jesus. We follow in his steps and we are with him in generosity. The second thing we can do in addition to being generous is to reflect on Jesus's generosity. We can imagine and reflect on the ways that Jesus gave of himself. Sarah Hennebrook texted me the other day with a great observation about John 3.16. A lot of times, We hear this famous phrase, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And we often apply that to the cross, that God gave Jesus' life by dying on the cross. But that's just one time. That was the final time that that Jesus gave his life, that the Father gave Jesus his life. Jesus was giving his life every day that he was on the earth. By being born as a human, God was giving his son. By trusting Jesus to Mary and Joseph to be raised, God was giving his son to these human parents. And then Jesus giving himself through his teaching and his miracles was God giving his son. It's not just the death, but Jesus's life was a gift every day. Philippians 2 has these famous words of the Apostle Paul that outline the way that Jesus gave himself. It says, in your relationships with one another, 
have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. As we move into our time of communion, I want to reflect on the ways that Jesus gave himself. Jesus gave up his position of privilege and power in heaven to come to earth. And when we think of the bread in communion, we're talking about the body, the body of Christ. Jesus gave up his status as God in heaven to come and take on a human body. He laid aside his, his power, his riches for poverty, as it said in 2 Corinthians 8, and he took on a body. And then he gave his life on the cross. He gave up uh, that, that body by uh, shedding his blood. And so when we participate in communion, we are remembering that Jesus is a giver. He gives his status for a body, and then he gives his body in his death. So when we give, whether we're giving to our church or another organization or individuals in need, we are not just giving because we should. We are giving with Jesus. Jesus is a giver, so when we are givers, we come to know Jesus better and we experience him more deeply. The purpose of giving is to commune with Jesus. When we receive the bread and the cup, sometimes I use the phrase, take communion. And I try really hard to not use that phrase because we're not really taking communion. It's better to be thought of as receiving communion or participating or partaking in communion. We're not taking anything. Rather, Jesus is giving us everything. We are participating in his gift and we are receiving his gift. Or the other name that we use for this is the Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. We are giving thanks for the gift of Jesus. This, this meal, is really all about generosity. Let's pray and receive the bread and the cup. Jesus, we thank you for your gift. The gift of your life when you died, but also the gift of your life as you lived, as you were a person, a human being, dealing with the ups and downs of life, teaching us, performing miracles, and healing people. Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your life. And we give you thanks. And we pray that as we give throughout our lives, that we would experience your presence, that we would commune with you. Thank you for this gift of your body and blood. We receive it with open arms. Amen. Let's participate by receiving the bread and the cup. All of this, everything that we've talked about today, is really about choosing to value experiencing God more than we value anything else. Generosity is a way of saying, I want to know God and be like God more than I want my own stuff. And we're going to sing this song that says the same with words, that says, God, I want to know your heart more than anything else. Let's sing together.
just want to know your heart I just want to know your heart I just want to know your heart better than I've ever known anything your heart I just want to know your heart I just want to know your heart better Make it loud and clear Make it loud and clear Do whatever it takes To let me know you're here To let me know you're here I just want to know your heart I just want to know your heart God, these are dangerous words to sing and pray that we want you to do whatever it takes to let us know that you're with us. And sometimes those are words that we can honestly say. Other times those are words that are really hard to say, do whatever it takes to let us know that you're here with us. God, there are hard things that are coming in our lives that we know of and hard things that we have no idea what they will be, both in the immediate future and in the distant future. But God, we pray that through those times, through the valley of the shadow of death, we would fear no evil and know that you are with us. Help us to pursue you, to know that you're with us by choosing the way of generosity, the way of fasting, the way of prayer, the way of the cross. We want to know you. We want to experience you. We want to know your heart. Speak to us. Let us know you with us. Church, I pray that you would choose the way of the cross and that you would choose the way of Jesus, but that you would not do that out of obligation or with a fearful spirit, but instead that you would know the love of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit to empower you to walk in the way of Jesus. Amen. Next Sunday, just a reminder, we are meeting outdoors at the church, or you can join us online on YouTube. I pray that you would have a blessed week this week. Thanks for joining us.